And um, the next question is from uh, Dina Long, L-O-N-G-E. Uh, some of this has been redacted to ensure that there is privacy as to their child. Uh, but the question uh, comes down to now that the district has had months to come up with a better plan, what is, the Mar what is MARS doing to improve on the virtual platform from 2020 to 2021 school year? And just as a caveat before uh, administration answers this, I just want people to know how many different balls are in the air as to what this administration has been doing. That not only have they had to improve on that virtual setting, uh, but also to prepare a hybrid learning in-person um, program. So not to mention a health and safety thank you, program. So there are many balls in the air. So while it may seem like everybody's had months and all this time, uh, it certainly hasn't been as much time as it may appear on the calendar. But if you could address that. So um, as, as many of the community is aware, we did a number of surveys. And we took those surveys very seriously. We took a lot of time um, with our teachers, our administrators, um, to really look at the results of those surveys. We did student surveys at elementary, middle, high school. We did parent surveys, um, and we did staff surveys. And we, we looked at the feedback. Um, we looked at the critical feedback and said, well, where can we improve? There's always areas to improve. So um, just in terms of consistency in instruction, um, that's one of our focus areas. Uh, consistency in the frequency of small group instruction, the diagnostic tools that we are going to use, um, consistency with the grading protocols, um, as well as the instructional pathways that the students will be provided with. Um, targeted professional development, um, as the community is aware, we made an adjustment to our district calendar to really front load the in-service days um, with a focus on social emotional learning, connecting with students, um, and mental health first aid. Um, in addition to that, um, blended learning is going to be a clear focus of the professional development that will look at how to create engaging virtual learning environments, um, which is not easy to do. So providing teachers with the tools and strategies to connect with students virtually as well as in person, um, looking at synchronous instruction and asynchronous instruction, um, how to um, conduct icebreakers with students, how to connect with them in different settings, um, as well as looking at um, social emotional supports and how we can connect the social emotional supports in virtual learning with um, blended learning supports. Our district technology teams um, looking at, we've refined and enhanced our programs. Um, we've uh, purchased um, programs that will allow for interactive um, assignments between the students and the teachers, um, looking at um, interactive um, add-ons for slideshows that students can present information in real time. They can present feedback and evidence of their learning and provide feedback from the teacher, whether that's in an in-person or virtual setting. Um, we have programs such as gizmos, which are online simulations that teachers can use to engage students, going back to some of the questions about labs um, and you know, what a physics and chemistry class will look like. Um, so obviously, you know, it's not the same as in person, but through the use of these tools, uh, we will mm -hmm. be able to engage students. Consistent assessments uh, across grade levels, uh, as we talked about, identifying specific standards and skills from the prior grade as well as the current grade. Um, and then what that will look like in terms of small group instruction um, to meet the students where they are based on that data. Um, so through that process, through the surveys, through the feedback, through the committees, um, we've identified specific areas that we can improve on that will be incorporated into the plan. Um, and, and professional development will need to be ongoing, embedded, and continuous. Um, that first week of PD isn't going to be the end. Um, so we realize that teachers are going to need that support. So um, we have listened to the feedback and we've incorporated that into our plans. And our goal is to have consistency across. Okay, the um, next set of questions comes from Beth and Tracy uh, Chatterwitz. I probably just pronounced that wrong. I apologize. It will spell it C-H-O-D-K-I-E-W-I-C-Z. Uh, some of this has been redacted and will be forwarded to um, the uh, union uh, delegate who is appropriate to uh, answer these questions. Uh, the first is the 
the parent guardian question answer sessions are scheduled for 8-12 and 8-19, while the return to school parent survey is due back by 8-12. Uh, have those dates been adjusted so that families can make an educated decision for their children based on the additional knowledge? So what, we, what we're doing is the parent survey will be due back on the 13th after the Q&A session on the 12th. Um, and the, the reason for this is a lot of our scheduling is going to be working off what we're getting back from the results of the survey. So in order to give us enough time um, to solidify the schedule and teaching assignments, uh, we're going to need to get that info back by the 13th. Uh, the next question I believe was asked, uh, was actually answered during a regular agenda. Did we hire more custodial staff? And I believe that was addressed in the finance yes. agenda. Yep. Uh, will these uh, will the cleaning procedures be checked and evaluated by some standard? Yes, absolutely. Our our director of facilities will be checking every day. We'll have comprehensive records of when cleanings are taking place, uh, when the electric static sprayer will be used. So all of those will be created in in real time documents that will be available, um, you know, literally on demand. And the director of facilities will be overseeing all of that. Uh, and uh, we address what they ask again, will hand sanitizers be provided, will they be refilled and replaced, I believe that was uh, addressed earlier. Yeah, absolutely, as we stated before, there will be hand sanitizer available in every classroom and hand sanitizing stations set up throughout each building. Uh, and how would items like Chromebooks, paper, uh, materials such as that, books be sanitized? For the most part, um, th those, those, that sort of material will be on the person itself. So we're not looking to be sharing pencils or pens um, or Chromebooks going back and forth. However, if necessary, we would, we would, we would sanitize them as well. Uh, next question, will the code of conduct disciplinary policy be amended to address the proper use wearing of masks? Yes. And as uh, just sort of an addition on to that, for the parents who are on here, uh, it, it is encouraged that you start uh, addressing this with your children and teaching them and explaining to them why it's important. Um, I think some of them have realized that with the initial shutdown of our athletics program, but uh, obviously that's something that can, the district's going to need a partner on, and that's the parents. Um, <clears throat> And in Dr. Micah's last letter, there's a number of resource links at the bottom of that letter to support families in working with children, and particularly young children, in wearing masks and building up that stamina to wear a mask for longer periods during the day. The um, next question is, how about students who uh, forget a mask? They come to school and they don't have one. So we, we like I said, we've been ordering PPEs. Um, we're going to be keeping a surplus on hand. So. If a student comes to school without a mask, we'd be able to provide one. Um, and the same would go for a staff member. If they come uh, without a mask, we would be able to provide them. Uh, there's a second portion to that uh, question, uh, which is really a comment. This should be added to the student dress code, just like wearing pants and a shirt to school. They must Students must wear or bring masks. Uh, and my understanding is that this is really a safety issue. Yes. And so that would be required. Mm -hmm. How are lock lockers being handled, and will they be spaced far enough apart? That's really bad. As of, as of right now, the plan is not to utilize lockers to avoid, to avoid such issues. Uh, and the pol has the student use of the bathroom policy been uh, created at this point? Something we're in the process of doing right now. Uh, will there be daily temperature checks by whom, when, and I believe that was asked and answered. Yes, that was, that was answered previously. As I said, we're following the current CDC guidelines where um, that questionnaire temperature will be done prior to coming into school. However, as I stated, if those CDC guidelines change, we will adjust accordingly. Uh, I believe these two questions have been asked and answered. Uh, will there be instrumental music and will there be labs? So our, our goal is to provide as much consistency in the, in the courses as, as possible. Um, 
So in terms of instrumental music, once again, I, I can't speak for an individual school, but our goal is to provide um, instrumental music, as we always have, as well as labs. However, it's going to look different um, than it normally has because of safety measures, particularly there's been guidance with instrumental music um, and the extra precautions that need to be taken. So we want to continue to integrate the arts um, and continue to integrate students and engage them in labs and opportunities, um, but it's going to look different to ensure their, their safety. So the short answer is yes, uh, but it's, it's going to look different. Uh, next question would be regarding emergency drills, how will they um, so, be able to be done? So right now, last year, the last three months, the state waived the requirement. Um, we're waiting for directives from the state as we speak, um, and we would be obligated to follow whatever the directives are from the state regarding uh, fire drills and, and emergency evacuation drills. And in regards to exposure, how would, uh, will staff, students, families be notified? If so, how? Um, <coughs> and, and as I stated before, uh, we're following the CDC guidelines and we're, we would be working with the local health department on each individual case, um, which, is, which is a requirement. And who would be, when a student has a fever, uh, what would be the procedure for notifying those who may have been exposed? Those, those protocols we're working on right now with, with our local health department and the NJ, excuse me, the NJDOE. Uh, in terms of the governor's uh, newer requirement limiting uh, 25 people indoors, uh, has this, is this being taken into account? Well, right now we're, right now we're, we're awaiting guidance. Um, I'm part of a uh, county superintendent organization that I sit on as vice uh, president, and we have posed many of the questions that have been asked tonight. We have posed up the ladder to the NJDOA and the governor's office, and we're waiting on responses. So um, the interpretation of the 25 person indoors right now, we're waiting to hear from uh, from the state as to how that is to be interpreted, whether it's each classroom or it's the whole building. So um, as soon as we get word back, obviously that'll be communicated out. Okay, uh, next set of questions is from Krista Pinter, P-I-N-T-E-R. Uh, some of this I believe has been asked and answered, uh, but again, I need to read the question. What does full remote learning entail? Will there be pre-recorded lectures, live stream lectures? Will these be daily or less often as they were at the end of last year? Is there a required number of hours teachers must interact live with kids? Um, so I think we kind of went through the full remote learning, what that will entail, our goal is to have consistency. Um, pre-recorded lectures um, and lessons uh, that will continue. Uh, flipped learning is a great way that allows the teacher to record a lesson using a tool such as Screencastify with a narrated PowerPoint. It also promotes flexibility. It gives students the opportunity to watch it uh, you know, at 7 o'clock at night if that's what best meets their needs, um, or watch it that morning. So it's a great way to promote flexibility um, in, a kind of a, in a flipped learning environment. Um, live stream lectures, we are, we are looking at that right now in terms of synchronous and asynchronous instruction, um, so I can't give specifics on that at this time. Um, daily or less often, we are going to have consistency. There will be a minimum number. Um, we do want teachers interacting with students, um, so in terms of a hybrid and the full remote, that is going to be different, um, as well as the in-person. So we will have minimum standards, but the expectation is that students um, will be continued will continue to meet with their teachers, teachers will continue to reach out and support students, um, and that is our goal, um, whether you're in a full virtual, full virtual hybrid or in person. Uh, will, and this is a follow-up, I guess, to the first question from Ms. Printer, uh, will remote students be assigned teachers that only instruct remote kids, or will same teachers be instructing in-person and remote learners? Will teachers of remote students have more students to manage than in-person teachers? So right now our, our goal is to have consistency as much as possible, but um, we are looking at our staffing right now. So um, a goal would be to have a dedicated teacher, um, you know, for students that are on full remote, but it's going to look at staffing, certification, and schedule. So that is something that our, our principals and assistant principals are working on right now. Um, so I can't say that it will be the same teacher at this time, but our goal is to promote as much consistency as possible. 
Um, and in terms of numbers, it would be the same way. That's something that we are going to look at based on the survey results um, that are going out. How many students will be taking full remote? Um, that's going to impact how we're going to push out and develop a schedule. Um, and that will also impact how many students a remote teacher has. Um, you know, we want to keep numbers man manageable, but at the same time, in person, we need to be cognizant um, of social distancing. So um, it's really going to depend on the number of families that opt for that full remote. Um, but we have to make sure that the students that are in person um, you know, are, are in classes that are appropriately sized so the instruction can continue in a meaningful way. Uh, I believe this was answered prior, and the answer was yes. Will remote learning students be taught in this will be taught the same curriculum as the in-person students. Yes, our, our curriculum and our expectations, our standards, and our skills um, will be consistent across the grade levels. Will the GNT program at Lloyd and a child in advanced classes um, in middle school, will they get the same instruction, same teachers as their peers if they choose in-person learning? Yeah, once again, that's a specific scheduling question. Um, so obviously we want differentiation uh, whenever possible. We want to meet students where they're at. Um, but in terms of the, the same teachers and their peers, um, that is yet to be determined based on the survey results and what model students and parents select. And I believe this has been answered. Uh, if I choose remote learning and a vaccine is approved and, a, and released partway through the school year, can my children switch over to in person? Uh, absolutely, yes. If I choose remote learning, will my middle schooler be able to participate in cross country or track, and I would expand that to the rest of the district, uh, to the high school, if the sports uh, find a way to proceed? Absolutely, yes. Will kids that go hybrid get an actual teacher instruction on three virtual days? So our goal is um, to provide instruction um, on that Wednesday when all students are remote. Um, that could be a combination of pre-recorded lessons that the students will watch, independent activities such as instructional pathways, um, as well as Google Meets where the teacher is meeting with students. That's going to vary across classes. Um, and on the other virtual days, it will be the same. It will be a combination of in independent activities, um, online um, activities that they will complete on personalized pathways, as well as um, small group teacher meets. Um, specials and electives could be prioritized on a particular day. Um, so that is, is in development, uh, but we are looking to have as much consistency as possible um, and as much student-teacher interaction as possible. If uh, I were to choose hybrid but my children felt unsafe, and again, I think this was asked and answered, the answer was yes. For instance, fellow students not keeping masks on or teacher students getting sick, can I switch them to remote? Yes. What is the exact hours uh, of the school day when learning in person and half day? I don't know if that's known at this point. So, yeah, it's, I mean, it's going to be a regular school day, so the minimum school day will be that four-hour minimum school day schedule. It doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to get through their full schedule if, you know, as once again, we're looking to prioritize, focus on those core subjects in the morning, and it could be that that's the focus of the morning and then the afternoon time, they're getting their specials and electives. So that is part of the work right now that's taking place in terms of scheduling. Um, <clears throat> next question, uh, will, you, will virtual learning hours be flexible for children like a 10-year-old who needs help but uh, the parents are working so they can only assist their child in the evening hours? Um, once again, you know, we, we have teachers there, you know, we have to adhere to um, contracts within, within our teachers' union, um, so we, but we want to provide students with support, so, uh, but we have to be cognizant that there are, there are contracted teacher hours and that will be followed, um, and that, that's the short answer. And just going back to the, um, the previous question in terms of school hours, the school hours, we don't anticipate the hours changing. So high school, elementary, middle school, they have set times for the beginning of the end of the school day. That will not change, um, and that will stay consistent, and that will be the expectation. But what they're doing within those hours could look different uh, depending on the schedule that's developed. Um, <clears throat> the next set of questions email comes from Michelle Devaney, D-E-V-A-N-N-Y. Um, it's got some personal information 
uh, that I don't know that it's appropriate, so I'm going to leave some of that out. Uh, but the concern that COVID tests are taking about five days to get back to people, I do believe they now have a rapid response test. Uh, at what point will a teacher or child be expected to quarantine themselves? If they quarantine themselves once, they know they've been around someone that has tested positive and waiting for their own tests to come back, uh, they could still have exposed people. So if somebody, I guess, finds themselves that learns that they've been exposed, uh, and they report that to us. Uh, Currently, the guidance is 14 days, and, and that's, that's the guidance we're following. Uh, regardless of whether or not you get a negative test result back, it's 14 days, which is what the CD says the incubation period is for the COVID. So the quarantine number is 14 days. And our information and ability to enforce that is, of course, dependent on parents being completely candid with the district or Department of Health. Is that fair to say? Yes. Uh, the next email is uh, from Nancy Carbone, C-A-R-B-O-N-E. I believe it's been asked and answered. How are bathrooms being managed, cleaned up after each use? Right. So um, along those lines, in between, uh, in between periods, and as I said before, um, the custodians will be out during the course of the whole day um, cleaning those high, those high volume areas um, and those high touch areas. And the bathrooms are one of those, so they're going to be con cleaned constantly throughout the day. It, uh, the next set of questions comes from Debbie Grease. Is there a dedicated teacher for those who chose 100% virtual, or will that teacher also be teaching in person? So right now that, that, that will be finalized, but at, that, at this time it is not finalized. It's going to be dependent um, on the number of students that select full virtual, and then matching the staff appropriately with certifications. And will the ones who attend 100% virtual be watching live Zooms? Um, they will not just be watching live Zooms. That will not be the case. Our goal is to have as much student-teacher interaction as possible. Uh, so it will not, just be, will not just be technology. And if students, I think we addressed this, if students attend in person, this also depends on the school that they're in, will they be changing classes? Um, our goal is to minimize the number of transitions. Um, so in, in many cases, if we can prevent the students from traveling and have the teachers travel, we look to do that. Um, once again, student safety is, is our top priority. So you know, anything that we can do within our schedule, um, we will do so. Uh, and I believe this has also been asked, to, asked and answered how many students to a class. Right. And like I said, that remains to be seen based off of how many people will be opting into the virtual. When will classrooms be cleaned? As, as we said, um, you know, there, they, some classrooms, if there is turnover, could be cleaned a couple of few times a day. Um, however, uh, the procedure at the end of every day, as I stated before, uh, a custodian would come in and do a cleaning of the whole room, which would be followed by the electric static sprayer coming in as well. I believe that this has been asked uh, and answered, but if there's anything to add, how will virtual be different uh, from last year? Um, I think that just to go back, it, the consistency. So we, we reviewed the surveys, um, more consistency um, with curriculum, with instruction, with services, um, with assessments, with grading. Um, and we, as I said earlier, we really looked at those surveys and the feedback that was provided. Um, and our goal is to enhance and, and use those lessons that we learned last year to provide a, an even better learning experience for our students um, in the fall. Um, and I know, uh, Mr. Bombardier, you have the question in front of you. There's some personal and in the interest of, again, privacy, I'm not going to read that. Um, that uh, portion. Uh, and then uh, I just want to say to Ms. Grease, you're welcome. And she said, thank you so much. And, and just looking at, I mean, in the general sense, platforms, so, you know, we, we will be using that Seesaw platform for our lower elementary. We uh, will be using Google Classroom um, for students in, in grades two and up um, to promote consistency. We'll be providing training, um, not only to our teachers, but also to our parents to make sure that they understand how to utilize the platform, making sure that our teachers are providing tutorials to our students. 
Um, and at this point, since we did use those platforms for the last few months of the school year, most are familiar, but we will continue to ensure that um, there is ongoing training and support for both our parents and our students and teachers. Okay, the um, next email comes from um, Mark Deller. Uh, that appears to be an email that's more appropriate to be uh, addressed to the union president, so that will be forwarded to him after this meeting. Uh, the next is Rafaela Donnelly, D-O-N-N-E-L-L-Y. -L -L um, thank you for your hard work and continuous effort to get our kids back in school. We truly appreciate the hard work that's gone into this. Looking forward to having our children in school on a hybrid schedule. My concern is related to the uh, virtual lessons, um, will there be actual grading this year for all the schools or? Yes, it will have, we will have regular grading across, um, although at the end of the year we, we did make a change at, uh, last year um, at the elementary level. Um, our goal this year is to have traditional grading. Um, once again, the types of assignments will look different, how they will be providing and submitting those assignments will be different. We will make sure there is flexibility, um, but in the end, there needs to be accountability, and it will be accountability and grades across the grade levels. And um, the other portion of her email is, will there be a requirement for teachers to have live co conferences with children? There, there will be some level of live conferencing with children at all levels. And uh, the additional part of that is a, uh, I, I redacted just to secure the personal information. I have pages that I had pre-printed. Um, are there additional questions that have come in during the meeting? Just the chat. The chat. There are, uh, there, are, there are comments and questions from the uh, chat, um, as well as the public comments. I'll, I'll defer to Ms. Friedman to see how she wants to handle each one of those. Um, I'll go up to the top of the chat room for Why don't you go through the chat room while I look up there. Just ask for everybody's patience as we go through the questions um, because since we're streaming on three different devices which are three different zoom meetings uh, we might have questions for, uh, yeah, for three different sources I um, prefer to keep the color let Allison read them again. As I read them, I'm going to forward them so they could become part of the document. Uh, so this question is submitted by Kim Eric, E-R-I-C. Uh, and there's no particular order to help <laughs> reading these. Hi, does this option cover PK and PK4 as well? Um, I'm so, guessing virtual or... Yes. Yes, the answer is yes. For, yes, for special education students, yes. Okay. Uh, the next question is from Edwin Gonzalez, G-O-N-Z-A-L-E-Z. -E Hi, I appreciate all the time and effort spent to address the challenges during this time. My question is regarding the GNT program. Are there any plans to provide a similar environment with in-school students, is the is that the base on the is that based on the number of GNT students available for the grade, specifically um, fourth and fifth grade who didn't get a chance to test into the program? So, being that uh, the school year ended abruptly last year, um, and we typically have multiple data points and specialized assessments for GNT, um, those students that were um, in that third grade will up to the fourth grade, those students in the fourth grade will remain in that fifth grade um, G and T, um, and then once we come back, um, you know, we will need to evaluate and look at our assessments at that time. But right now, that is the plan to have fourth grade and fifth grade G and T of Lloyd Road as that self-contained class. Um, 
The next question pertains to special ed, um, special education IEP 504. Uh, it's from an Aaron uh, A R A L E. Uh, it's it's very specific to um, that particular student so, need, so I'd like to email that to Ms. Perez yeah. so she can respond personally to yes. her, if that's okay. This is from Georgette Wangen, W-A-N-G-E-N. I'm so sorry if I'm mispronouncing these names. How will the schools and individual classrooms be deep cleaned on Wednesdays if all the teachers are um, in their classrooms for the day? So following that same protocol, um, when, when, this, when the teacher is out of the room, the, the, the custodians will come in, do a complete cleaning of the room, and that'll be followed by the electric static sprayers coming through to, to, to disinfect. Okay. The um, next question also addresses special education. Uh, generally speaking, um, this is submitted from a Dennis Rivera. Uh, for uh, children who are getting, are working with speech, how will the mask issue, how does that work? with a child who, who needs speech therapy. So um, those particular classrooms, as Dr. Michael mentioned, that there were some rooms that would have the plexiglass. That's currently what we're using for ESY, so we anticipate that those rooms would have the plexiglass along with a mask that has um, clear where the lips are, um, that it would be a clear um, piece there um, for the students to work. Uh, and this is submitted by the same uh, Actually, a different person, excuse me, Dennis Rivera, R-I-V-E-R-A. Will students be instructed five days a week? I believe this was asked and answered. Two days in class, three days virtual. It's actually two days that are in class, but half days, and they go home and do the other half. Yes. Okay, the next is somebody who logged on um, late from an Omer uh, Ahmad, uh, A. H M A D. The first two Zoom calls were full. It got on the third, which uh, I'm glad he did. Um, referencing the PowerPoint, that PowerPoint is going to be posted on the district site tomorrow. First thing tomorrow morning, the PowerPoint will be posted as well as the complete re-entry plan. The next question is from Jennifer Brown. Understanding that it's required to wait until the end of the marking period to switch from virtual to hybrid model. If a student starts the school year hybrid, uh, will you have to wait until the end of the marking period to switch to fully remote? Uh, the concern is, is if there's an emergent issue or casing, yeah. cases spiking right. and not being able to. No, the, the answer is you would not have to wait. However, when you wanted to re-enter, you would have to wait until the end of a marking period. So if you're on hybrid and want to go to remote, absolutely at any time you would be able to do that. Okay. Uh, this is also a special education question. Um, I'm, it includes a cell phone number, so I'm going to assume that that is a request for a personal response. I'm going to forward that to Ms. Perez if there's yes. no objection. Yep. Uh, that's from a Michelle Devaney. Okay. Uh, it, this is from Iona. Oh boy. Uh, Badachi, B-O-T-O-C-H-I, and I apologize. Uh, good evening, if a student was in ESL program last year, will he be automatically enrolled in the program this year? Also, can you explain how ESL program would happen? Which I think we touched on, that would be one of the five days a week. Yes. And it would, so ESL students being that we did not administer the traditional access for L's at the end of the year, those students would continue in the ESL program. Um, and then once we are um, able to assess them, whether that's using the WIDA um, screener, um, and they are able to exit, we would then exit them, but they will continue until such time that we um, can screen them to determine if it is appropriate for them to exit. Okay, this uh, question concerns transportation, which I believe we'd be addressing uh, later. Uh, it's from uh, Neely, there's no last name, M-E, 
LI. Due to our current work from home situation where we now have a need for school bus transportation, how do we go about getting bus transportation? We've never used it. So, it's actually from the off, Johnson family. Right. Some students are mandated by state law that we have to um, bus to school. So I have to know the specifics. So I, I would ask that person to send me an email individually and I'll reach out to them. Uh, there is a question submitted from Darren Mohammed, who wishes to sign up for five-day virtual classes and inquiring uh, how to do that. And I believe there is uh, a survey going yeah, on. So in tomorrow's community letter, there'll be a, uh, a questionnaire attached, and th that is going to be one of the specific questions that will be asked, whether or not you're choosing um, a virtual, complete virtual model. And uh, again, I... I've abbreviated the email because it includes student names and ages, and uh, I want to maintain privacy for those children. Uh, again, this is from um, Michael Devaney. It actually may be a repeat. Um, but again, his cell phone is, number is there, so I would like to forward that to uh, Ms. Perez it concerns students with IEPs. Is that okay? Yes. Okay, so this next question is from Tracy AC. Uh, the question is, is special education all or nothing? My, uh, her son, she's concerned about him starting five days uh, all week long. So is there a... I think that, once again, we should have okay. Ms. Perez reach out for those individual questions. Uh, this is from Kristen Foley. Hello, thank you for all the work you're putting into all of this. I can only imagine how much work uh, it must be. Um, will virtu full virtual students have access to teacher synchronous teaching, uh, specifically to third grader or seventh or MAMS? Um, and uh, again, there's some considerations as to honors classes. There is some personal detail to it, but that, that's generally what it says. I can forward that to Mr. Bombardier if that's appropriate. Yes. There will be instruction taking place on those um, full virtual days. Um, some of that instruction will be the expectation the students will be logging on to work with the teacher, so there will be some level of synchronous instruction involved. Uh, there was an email received from a Susan Solano, S-I-L-A-N-O. Um, There is a uh, question, part of this I, I believe would be more appropriate to be answered by the union. Um, will there be plexiglass or dividers made or other materials provided to the classrooms, which I believe we've answered. Um, so I, I don't know if, I guess she was, uh, wasn't able to log on to the meeting, so. Understood. Uh, and, but I think the answer to that was yes, and that's yes. being decided. Okay, uh, I believe this was answered in the PowerPoint presentation. This uh, email is from Amy Kerska. Um, concerning the MCVSD, uh, if we're on half day, uh, is the MCVSD, how does that work? Vocational school students affected. And so we will be working with them. Um, we will need to coordinate schedules as best we can. So we will need to look at those on a case-by-case -case basis, depending on the student and the schedule that that student has and that's got each of those schools. And that is all I have from public comments. Okay. Um, I, I would like to add so that people are aware, I am not able to read the comments in the chat room, but those are going to be saved and preserved. Um, so that will become part of the record. I, are there other? Questions right popping up here in the chat rooms. Okay. So, why don't we start at the top and work our way down? Uh, so, this question is from Nancy Carbone. Everyone, why can't there be two full days? Um, well, essentially, those students um, and all the students will have full days of instruction, um, but due to the uh, schedules and 
protocols that we need to ensure um, of the classrooms, cleaning and so forth, as well as scheduling. Um, we will be going on those minimum school day schedules, but the expectation is instruction will be continuing full day. How will the alphabet split work for the high school? Everyone doesn't have the same classes, and I know also adding on to this, the academies. Yeah, so um, that is um, part of the work and, and the, uh, the puzzles that have to be put together based on the students and their schedules, and that is continuing now with the principals and assistant principals, um, and that will be shared out. I know Mr. Eiler is working on a, um, a video that will explain and illustrate the um, scheduling and the model that's going to be used at the high school where it is a bit more complicated um, for various reasons. Okay, this is from Galaxy S10e. Uh, everyone, how is disinfecting being done in between classes? We answered and asked that. Yeah, so it's similar to what Dr. Mango explained. Um, there is obviously cleaning that takes place on a regular basis, as well as after after the instruction completes in person, and then um, the sprayers will be used for the purposes of disinfecting. This is, the next is um, from Conrad and Irene, P24. Is there a difference between remote learning and virtual instruction? Are they the same thing? Um, please define this. These are models of modes of instruction. Yeah, essentially remote and virtual, um, they're terms used, um, but essentially mean the same thing. The students are not physically present in the classroom, um, but working remotely from home and getting virtual instruction, whether that's through an online platform, through a flipped learning, where they're watching a pre-recorded video, or through a synchronous instruction. Um, where they're working with the teacher um, in a Google Meet style. Uh, the next is from Jason Priest, uh, or the lead is an architect, but the last name is from the architect. How will kindergarten classes use virtual learning since they're unable to read? Well, that, that will be part of the um, part of the instruction that will be taking place, whether that's use of Google Meet, um, the Seesaw platform that allows for interactions. Um, between the teacher and the student in a developmentally appropriate and grade appropriate manner. Um, but learning to read is a, is a fundamental skill and that will continue um, whether that's in person, virtual, or hybrid. Uh, and this is from Nancy Carbone. How is bathroom cleaning between students being managed? I believe we've answered that as one of the high contact areas. Yes. Uh, from Shana Pitta. Will a hybrid model be offered for specialized population two? Uh, this is a similar question that was asked before. Um, the answer to that part is yes. So anyone has the option. Um, any of the specialized populations that we um, are going to accommodate full day in person, but all of those specialized groups and all students have the option for full remote. Um, and I, I would just say, if, if there is a staff question. Yeah. Um, well, we will forward to Casey all staff questions. Yes. Okay. Can you scroll back oh. down? I think the one is how many students in a self-contained list. Yeah, there's a lot of questions. <coughs> That's on the square footage. Uh, okay. So the question continues, how does, uh, Going back five days, keep the risk of exposure low. Mainstream population is two groups, only two days a week. In person, in order to keep the risk of exposure low, how many kids uh, to class for a self-contained classroom? It depends on the square footage of the room. So that could vary depending on what the square footage of the room that self-contained student is in. And uh, is it fair to say that a uh, gen ed classroom has more children in typically? Yes. Um, so uh, then the, the Florence Acosta, uh, that question I believe should be directed to yep. uh, union representation. The question is, is there a preliminary read on how many students will be opting for all remote learning? Um, as I stated from the, at the onset, right now we're looking, you know, in the mid to high 700 number, which is about a quarter of our student population, a little bit under. Um, so we are we are uh, 
and that could change over the course of the next week as we get more of the questionnaires back but that's where we stand as of today and I, I would also just uh, so that we're clear uh, in terms of the uh, type of record here during the chat there are some people who are responding to questions uh, ahead of us reading them which uh, we're looking to make sure that the accurate information is getting out as best we can okay. the next question is from Lisa Haystry uh, I, I don't know that that's that. permissible for us to discuss no. we have on ongoing negotiations right now discussions I should say um, uh, and again this question from Lori can we switch if the hybrid isn't working and the answer to that is yes um, and it, Oh, this is one of the things up, okay. Uh, those can, you can keep going, because this is one we are hooking up the other thing. Keep going. Okay, what about two siblings with two different last names going on two different days? Will they be put on same day schedule from yes. Jeff Thomas? The, um, the answer to that is yes, and those will be looked at as a case-by-case -case basis. I would tell you, if you're in a situation like that right now, please reach out to whatever building principles your children are in so that they can get that ball rolling um, to get that accomplished. And then we can scroll down. This is OK. Well, those that are virtual learners be able to participate in extracurricular activities, activities, clubs, et cetera. The answer to that was yes. So everyone is aware we weren't really talking about anything other than trying to figure out how to do this quickly. Yeah, the, there are some questions, if we're scrolling past them, they are pertaining to really things that need to be discussed with the union, which we're not, um, it's not appropriate to do at this point um, as negotiations are continuing. Transportation in general, we would deal with at a future yes. meeting. So I would ask Cassandra Harrison if you could hold on to your question. Caitlin asked, so Max will be off in the small confines of the classroom while students and staff eat. I don't so, believe that's what was said. No, so so it, for, the, for the vast majority, there'll be grab-and-go lunches. However, if there's a particular situation where they're eating in school, it will have to be done being socially distanced. Uh, the question from Melissa, so for sole virtual learners, the only day they would receive live teaching would be on Wednesdays. All other days would be self-taught. Uh, I don't believe that that was the answer that was given, that uh, live teaching would be incorporated um, for everybody equally uh, to maintain equity. How much time do you have between in-person meeting and then the rest of the day remote learning? Yeah, it's going to um, vary by school. They're, they'll follow their regular minimum school day schedule, um, but there will be ample time, you know, <laughs> for the student to get home, eat their lunch, and, and continue with their instruction. How will the hybrid uh, in-school day look? Will it be face-to-face -face instruction on virtual days? Uh, and I believe the short answer is we are still working on the actual schedule. Yes, right. But there will be a level of, you know, even the full virtual students will have lessons, traditional lessons with the teacher in a virtual setting. Is, virtual, is the virtual learning three days a week a live lesson or recorded? Um, right now, it, it could be a combination of both. Um, but that, is, that is being finalized. Um, as I said earlier, uh, flipped lessons where the pre-recorded lessons pushed out doesn't allow for flexibility. 
um, but we also understand there are times when teachers will need to have synchronous lessons, such as using a Google Meet, um, so it will be a combination of both. And uh, what supports can we give uh, parents? What support can the parents give their kids when the teacher is in class and we're at home with the kids? Um, and a question, I guess, about homeschool. You all take the homeschool. You want to take the first part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, you the first part about balance. Oh, so we will have, we'll continue with our parent university, um, which we'll be pushing out trainings, um, and that will focus on strategies, you know, to support their children at home, whether that's social emotional learning, um, as well as strategies to support them in remaining engaged in a virtual learning environment. So um, we'll continue to have targeted PD for parents as well as our staff. And to answer the homeschooling, um, if, if you are looking at homeschooling as an option, um, you are correct, you have to disenroll, um, and you would send the request through through my office. So it would just be an email to me directly, and then I would take care of the rest at that point. But just for clarification, homeschooling is completely separate from a virtual online program. If you are choosing to homeschool, as, as the comment said, you would have to disenroll your student from the district um, prior to beginning homeschooling. So Kaza asks, um, what will students in the high school do when it's their lunch period uh, on in-school days? And my understanding is there wouldn't be. I'm sorry. What will students do in the high school when there's lunch period on in-school days? Right, so that will be, they will not have lunch if they're a, if, other than those students that are attending full day, they will not have lunch at school. It will be delivered to the classroom at the end of the day as a grab and go. That period could be a, an opportunity for the teacher, whether that's a, a, a meeting with the teacher to focus on connecting with students, social emotional learning, or just an additional academic support time for the student. Uh, next question is from Mr. Priest again. Um, if our daycare offers full-time kindergarten, will the school provide partial funding for those parents? The answer to that, as it stands right now, is no. Oh, I missed, I'm sorry, I missed the one above it from Hines. Uh, when you say face coverings, does that specifically mean masks and not visors? And I think there was a CDC. So the CDC guidance is that face coverings would be, um, you know, a mask type of material, um, not necessarily visors. So one of them is not interchangeable for the other. So if you wore a, a face shield, you'd also have to wear a mask yes, to be CDC compliant. Yes, correct. Right. If a child is, this is from Ms. Harrison, the child uh, is maybe sick on what should be an in-school yes. day, can they log in for remote so they don't miss anything? The answer to that is that would be a, a, a parental decision, so it could be either yes or no, depending on, on, on what that unique individual situation is. And that would be something that they would email the principal of the school, my child is out. Exactly, yes. Uh, this is from the Sliding Baby family. If a student is fully virtual, will they be online with their classmates and the teacher that they will have for the remainder of the year, including if they go back into classroom learning? That will depend on schedule. Our goal is consistency. So our goal is if they start the year with the teacher, we, by all means, would want to continue that. Um, at the high school, depending on the course, um, it, it gets a little bit um, more complicated, but our goal is to have consistency. Um, but at this time, with the full remote option, not something we can guarantee to say you'll have the same teacher when you go back in person that you did in full remote. Uh, and the next question is, what is the protocol? I'm not sure what well, that's referring I don't know, but I would ask when the, when the plan is released tomorrow, after you've read through it, um, any questions that remain afterwards, please reach out and we will, we can have a conversation and discuss. Uh, yes, I'm reading them off the chat as well as the ones that were sent. Thank you. Um, right there, let's do this, ensure they receive. Okay, well, um, yes. 
all students be ensured they receive their academic academy classes if they choose remote. That's from Conrad and I think. Yes. Uh, my student uh, from MS, my student only had one small group meeting for 20 minutes. Uh, once in kindergarten, it should be daily first grade. So that, that's more of a comment and I think we're addressing that. Again, what would max, maximum class sizes be for B gray? Uh, that I believe was asked and answered. We don't know. It really depends on how many go virtual, etc. <clears throat> what is the target building capacity? Depends on the building and yep. again, uh, but we're going to be following CDC guidelines. Uh, will classrooms be cleaned between classes? Multiple ch children share desks throughout the day. So, so like we said, we're going to we're going to. Um, do our best to keep cohorts together so that is not the case however if we are in a situation like that that those desks would be clean in between the periods yes uh, the next question is from D Fin 9 elephant 9 um, and I you know I I, I empathize I'm a full-time working parent and there are other people on the board um, district is doing the best we can to, to make this as malleable as possible for parents, but obviously the safety of the kids come first, as well as the continuity of instruction. Uh, how will AP courses be provided and how will AP tests be conducted? Kind of touched on that. They did make some accommodations with AP tests taken virtually we would assume that would continue um, but our goal is to be able to accommodate students for the courses that they, they wish to take. We have to put the next one to the to Casey. Uh, and yeah, that goes to Casey. Okay, so the next question would go to the union. That's the AP question. Is there school breakfast and how will that be handled? So at this point, the conversation that we're having with Chartwells, which is our food service uh, management company, is that uh, we would provide the students when we, like Dr. Michael said, when we provide lunch, uh, we would provide breakfast for the following day. Uh, and if you happen to be a student that is fully remote, then at that point we would utilize, similar to what we did in the spring, we would utilize a distribu two distribution sites uh, where parents could pick up uh, multiple days worth of meals. Uh, we're still, like Dr. Mike has said, a lot of these um, circumstances are still kind of being developed by the Department of Ed and the Department of Agriculture, so we're still waiting for additional guidance on what is the appropriate level and how. Uh, how will their teachers, and the, I, if I'm understanding the question submitted by B. Gray, this is in terms of people who are in class in the morning, and then have to get back home to log in on the virtual, will there be ample time yes. accounting for walking versus busing, et cetera? Yes, yes, absolutely. Uh, that's a statement. The mask, read, read that out. Uh, so, it would say that masks will be required on a case by no. case basis. However, what if a student OPTS so, opts to wear a shield? Will that be accepted no. as a face cover? No. What I meant by a case by case basis is if someone has a health issue precluding them from wearing a mask. So I'll, I'll repeat: masks are mandatory. So. If there is a health issue involved, that would be a case-by-case -case basis. So if you're a staff member and have, any, have it, a particular issue, you need to reach out to our personnel human resources department. And if you're a, a parent um, with a child that has an issue, they should reach out to their building principal so we can work out the details prior to school starting. Uh, is there a disciplinary plan for students who refuse to wear a mask specifically in middle school? Yes. We're, we're, we're working on that currently, yes. Right. Uh, the CD, so 
read that one? CDC guidance is 10 days, no fever for 24 hours. So my, my response before that stated 14 days quarantine was based off of a, a countywide discussion that we had with the county health officials. So um, having been told this now, I will follow up with the county tomorrow to get verification on what the specifics of that are. also a statement which I greatly appreciate. Statement. Statement. Will students be having a snack when they're there for four-hour days? Yes. Right. At this point, there is no plan for that. At this point, there is no plan for that. It would be the grab-and-go lunch. Does the board consist, no. consider hosting outdoor classes and renting <laughs> tents for fall and spring months when it would be feasible? Um, um, have you considered South Brunswick? So addressing the first one, um, there, you know, we've just spent hundreds of thousands of dollars securing our schools. Um, there is a huge security risk with holding classes outside, and safety, security, they go hand in hand. Uh, health, security go hand in hand. So. Uh, yes, I, we considered it, but safety is, is paramount there. Are there opportunities for parents to help volunteer aid in the virtual classrooms, uh, be assist the teacher with virtual learning and technologies? Would that be a so? Uh, we, we are we are open to any and all people that want to help. So if you're if you're in one of those positions and are looking to add to help us. I would ask that you can send my send me directly an email, and I will ensure that it will go to the right places. Um, but uh, you know, absolutely, we would we would not we're not shying away from anything. Okay. So, if the teachers working with someone, would they have the opportunity? Yeah, where yes, absolutely. Around? And in fact, some of some of the PPE, specifically masks that we've ordered, are specifically clear. Um, uh, Clear, a clear part on the mask where the mouth is, yes. I think she's asking just in general. Does it have to be only speech teachers? No, we're, we're getting them for, Everything. generally speaking, for everyone they'll be available, yes. Yep. Okay, um, how can remote students still participate in after school clubs and sports? I they, think that they, would be schools. Yeah, they will be allowed to, they will absolutely be allowed to participate. This is, I believe, been asked. Yeah. Uh, what have we learned? Uh, I think we've answered that. Yeah. I've given me three and a half months of virtual learning. What lessons did the district learn? Worked, not worked? How is the district invested in training professional workshops, teachers to improve, improve on online learning? Yes. And it's a work in progress. And we've answered it. And we've taken all the lumps that have come our way in an effort to improve it as well as the um, encouragement and compliments because for some people things went very right for some people they didn't and uh, we're trying to get it as consistent and as best as it possibly can be so that concludes the uh, chat feature of the first zoom uh, Zoom call. Yeah, it's two more Zooms. Yeah. 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 Can you get those questions up? Uh, we would have to John, John's line, we're having to keep them All right. We'll start with you, Mike. Sure. Okay. Okay. All right, first question on chat room three is from the user. The question is, Considering most teachers teachers are also parents, will there be any flexibility for teachers who cannot find or afford childcare for their own children to learn different districts on different schedules? Uh, we're currently working on um, working those issues out with the union right now. From Beth Brown, can you give more detail on how you will support IEP administration for students on virtual learning? Provide um, instruction outlined in their IEP along with any services. 
For Robin Susan Solano, we'll be providing face shields and eye protection for teachers. With the PPE we're at ordering right now, uh, our masks, um, we are also ordering shields um, that will be made available as well. From Julio Lopez, was anything mentioned about student, re student requirements for when students are on their remote days? His child will only be in school twice a week, but his child care provider will not be able to help him during the day. John, so the expectation for students, um, if they choose full remote, um, we do expect that students are going to be logging in for their courses, whether that's a synchronous school will meet with their teacher, whether that's uh, watching a recorded teacher lesson and completing the follow-up independent activities. Um, that is the expectation. If if the full remote option is selected um, because we do need to ensure that we have expectations across the board that are similar, that we cover our curriculum, and that the standards and skills are consistent regardless of the model choice. From Melinda Loro, is lunch allowed from home? Well, no, no, lunch, lunch, since it's going to be an abbreviated schedule, lunch will be at home. From Kristen, if they're if they're full day, yes, they they would allow, be allowed to bring their own lunch in. Yes, correct. Thank you. From Kristen Notchin, will they be allowed to eat or drink anything during the day? For the full day, okay. yes. For the full day, yes. If, if yes, if if a student needs to to drink, they're going to be allowed to have have water. Yes. From VZW underscore P001. Why are only certain groups being given the option for full day instruction? Why is this not being afforded to all students? Um, well, because of the um, scheduling, and we do want to prioritize um, those students in those specialized populations that will require the most support. Um, we would want to provide support to every student, but just given the confines of the schedule and the requirements for social distancing, um, the decision was made to focus on those specialized populations for full day instruction. From Galaxy Note 9, will a recording be available to view or listen to everyone who didn't get to hear the entire meeting this evening? Yes, absolutely. It'll be on the YouTube channel tomorrow? Um, probably within a couple days right. because uh, the gentleman that records it has needs some time to edit. All right. So uh, within the next uh, the next couple of days, it'll be up. Like all of, all of our meetings are are up on our website. From iPhone, is special education all or nothing? This person's not sure how they feel about their child attending five days a week, all or nothing. We would work with them. They should email me or the case manager, but we would work with the family individually to transition the student and the child is just possible. From Larissa's iPhone, is there remote learning taking place on all three days the children are not attending? And will before and after care be offered on the days the child is not attending? So don't do the before and after care. Yeah. For the for the instruction component, um, yes, instruction is provided for each student five days a week. However, two days of that, if they choose hybrid, will be in person. And as far as what was the second part? Before and after is there, is there, yes, before, before and after care will be offered. As I said, um, there'll be a representative from the Y at our meeting at our q a next wednesday um but the answer to that is yes from versus iphone how is it expected that children attend virtually in the afternoon on the days they are in school when parents are working and children may be in aftercare we, have, we understand that you know everyone's situation is different um and, and we we do understand that however we do want to make sure that students are getting their full um, level of instruction um, so we will have expectations. However, as stated previously, we understand that there needs to be flexibility, and we will ensure that there is flexibility in terms of how they can complete assignments, when they can submit assignments, and um, whenever possible, giving flexibility and when they can watch pre-recorded lessons. From Bobby Reese, uh, this person would like to know about tuition-based preschool and what is the decision regarding tuition-based preschool. So regarding tuition-based preschool, um, will be a question that's on the survey tomorrow, but as it stands right now, um, it, it does not look like we would be able to offer tuition-based 
preschool based on the social distancing needs of our mandated preschool students right now. However, um, if there's an opportunity to offer it, we certainly will. From VZW underscore P001, why do we make a decision to enter into a hybrid model when the cases of COVID in New Jersey is below 1%? We're working parents taking into account when the decision was made. The decision was made at the state level. Um, so as far as, um, as that is concerned, we're following state directives as we speak. Uh, Larissa's iPhone, the question is, how about breakfast? I think this was asked when we were discussing yes. uh, eating in the classroom. Yep. So breakfast will be um, a part of the grab and go as well. Um, however, if, yes. From Susan Solano, have any amendments been made to the HVAC filtration system to more thoroughly clean the school's air? Right. The, the, answer to that, it, the answer to that is yes. As I stated before, fortunately, we have brand new HVAC in all of our buildings, um, and uh, the filtration that is used um, has a certain uh, MERV rating uh, to, to filter out the air as best as possible, yes. From Larissa's iPhone, where can someone find the link to register to attend the August 12th meeting? It'll be posted tomorrow and there'll be a link in the community letter that goes out, which from, will go out to everyone at the same time. From VZW underscore P001, why would there be why time if we are so concerned about the kids returning to school? Why time is being offered as an option for those parents that may be having to have childcare um, and, and that it, while maintaining the social distancing. From Ashley D, can parents get any type of teacher's guide for new topics being taught prior to them being taught? This would be helpful if the kids have questions and the teacher's not available us. New parents can at least help them without confusing them more. Yeah, so one of the goals of using the virtual platforms such as Seesaw and Google Classroom is that teachers can post information not only for the students, um, but also can post information to support parents um, and a number of teachers throughout that phase two um, created tutorials for parents um, and as well as our continued back to school nights and parent teacher conferences which may be virtual but that will be an additional measure of support. From iPhone, how many hours will the kids be in school during the school day from what time? Schools will follow the regular school day schedule. Um, for the full day instruction, however, for the in-person, they will follow the school's minimum school day schedule. From Jamie's iPhone, special ed younger kids who get speech, how will the mask issue work for them? We shared that before. Um, in terms of the speech rooms, there will be plenty of glass in the room. Um, students will be provided with a clear mask as well as the speech tablets. From iPhone, for the parent who is working during the day, how will I be able to help the elementary school kids during the day? Can you repeat that question? Yes. The mom so, can help. From my phone, for the parent who is working during the day, how will I be able to help the elementary school kids during the day? We understand um, it's not easy. Um, however, you know, we are going to provide teacher support as much as possible, um, and that's Sometimes it's often going to take place in the afternoon um, when teachers are available for individualized support. Um, teachers will do their best to make themselves available to support students as much as possible. From Jamie's iPhone, why only four hours a day? Why not maximize the day? Um, so we um, will have full day instruction. However, the in-person component, for the reasons discussed earlier, um, will be a minimum school day for the majority of the population. From Jamie's iPhone, special education, is it five full days in person? How many hours? Four or the actual full day? It's um, five days a week for the full day. From Tiffany, if you choose fully virtual, can kids still participate in sports? Mm -hmm. I can sports practice if students are only there two days a week. Yes. Uh, yes, the answer to that is yes. From Stephanie, why is hybrid in the school only a half day? If they are going to school, why can't it be a full day? Thank you. Yes. Okay. Yes, Stephanie. Um, from Jay Johnson, they want to know, Dr. Mike, uh, they want to know your email address. Can you post it into the chat room, Alex? Uh, 
They would have to be yeah. Mike to check. But, it, but Dr. Micah's email address is, is on the uh, district web page under uh, department and then superintendent. And from Jamie's iPhone, will my kid, will student fail because they won't do virtual because I work in the even day? I don't think people we have a lot of expectations for the students, but there will be flexibility built in. Um, however, assignments will need to be completed, um, and evidence of student learning will be measured and graded. That was the last question from chat. Thank you. I'll go through the final chat room. Uh, can you save the chat? From Sensi Anthony, uh, what does minimum instruction mean on the two-day um, in-school learning? Uh, so that I think we addressed that when students will be um, in person in the morning, but instruction will continue in the afternoon. From Joseph, will alcohol-based hand sanitizers be placed in each classroom and throughout the building? And then the answer is yes, we will have them. The, the answer to that, yes, um, with reference to hand sanitizers on the bus, there's some conflicting information uh, as to the viability um, of having flammable materials on a bus. Uh, so the Department of Transportation, I believe, is providing us with a couple of alternatives that are non-alcohol based. From Cheryl, that was just a comment, I believe. Um, from Alicia's iPhone, will full remote students have access to teachers? Absolutely. From uh, Jamie's iPhone, special ed would have a seven hour, will special ed have a seven hour full day and regular ed four hours? Um, so special ed, um, those self-contained populations we discussed earlier will be invited for the full day. Um, regular ed, with the exception of those specialized populations, will attend in person minimum school day, but the expectation is full day of instruction. From Carol, um, is the next meeting the 12th or the 11th? It's the, 11th. the 11th. Tuesday the 11th. Tuesday the 11th. From Vanessa Fredericks, how are they social distancing in the classroom? Six feet apart. From uh, Tara Gisabel, okay, I'm sorry, these are just comments. Let me just. Um, from Max, do the students have to log on after the four-hour in-person days are complete? If so, how long? Yes, the, uh, the expectation is there will be some level of instruction in the afternoon, um, whether that's a special elective, uh, or in some cases just a check-in or a small group with the teacher. Um, so in terms of how long, that will vary depending on the grade level and the content area. Um, from Carol, how will the full remote learning children get to meet their teachers? Um, and we will utilize um, our online platforms such as Google Meet where they can have synchronous um, lessons and introductions and morning meetings with their students just as the hybrid students would. Um, from Debbie's iPhone, paper health screenings we send in every day. Um, yes, the expectation would be that we would have a, a form um, that we would need completed each day by the parent. Um, from Heidi Tillis, for the for the in school learning, will the kids switch classes in the middle school or high school? Um, so we'll, we will do our best to minimize any transitions, um, and our goal is to have the teachers switch classes um, versus the students to minimize transitions. Um, but there will um, be times when the students will need to move about the hallway, and we will make sure the schedule. Um, does this where there's only a small or limited amount of students in the hallway at a time. From Kristen Foley, um, will full virtual students have access to teachers and synchronous learning? Yes. I have a rising, I don't want to get into specific student information. Uh, I'm curious about my seventh grader who will be in pre-algebra. Um, he will, will he still have access to a skilled and qualified teacher? Absolutely. Uh, from Max, will in-person students be changing classrooms each period? That will not be the case. We'll have staff move whenever possible. Um, 
some of these are more just comments. We understand that students, young students will uh, need to be acclimated to wearing a mask for longer periods of time. Um, from Jamie, how can we expect the children to wear masks the entire time they are in school with classrooms with no AC? We, we, do, have, we do have air conditioning, yes. Um, from Richard Riccardi, I just want to confirm that you'll be checking them individually each day along with the questionnaire. I'm asking because some people send their kids to school when they are sick because they have no one to watch them. Um, also, I believe you are doing a great job. You'll never make everyone happy. Uh, Thank you. From Sensi Anthony, for the kids that do full remote, will there be live stream on the in-person class or will their learning be completely different? You know, the expectation is there will be um, synchronous instruction for those students on full remote. Um, is it possible to have cameras installed in the classroom so that virtual students can take advantage of in-class instruction? Um, that is something that um, we talked about earlier and that we are in discussions about. Obviously, we take our student um, and staff privacy seriously, so we'll be um, sharing more information about the recording of lessons. Is, uh, from Debbie's iPhone, is there, so there is not a plan developed at this time to respond to positive COVID cases. Um, there is a plan we're following the guidance um, from the health department and the CDC. Uh, from Erin Arali, I have two children that receive extra help, one in the middle school with an IEP and is a specialist in specialized classes. My other child I have is in elementary in 504. Do they fall under special ed five-day week programming? Yep. Uh, obviously, that would be something to email Mrs. Perez about. Um, any specific questions, please email Mrs. Perez and she'll be able to get back to you. Um, Okay, um, in terms of Chris and Foley, we're committing to virtual tomorrow. There will be a survey coming out. You will not have to commit tomorrow, but we will have a time frame, and it will be a narrow time frame as we do need to get schedules developed. Um, from Joseph, why don't the schools have thermal scanners? Uh, okay, all virtual kids have some, there will be some level of synchronous teaching for the students that are on full remote. From Steve uh, Matlick, how is kindergarten virtual learning going to look if a parent is working from home and able to um, home and able to be around? Does the parent need to block out specific times to be available to assist their child um, for, required Google, for required Google Meet meetings? Um, you know, with a student at that level, yes, there will be some level of parent support that will be needed. From David Greer, has the district submitted the NJDOE? Has the district submitted to the NJDOE the attestation for reopening of schools, ensuring that all items on the NJDOE checklist are addressed in the MARSD reopening plan? If not, does the district plan to submit the attestation to the NJDOE? We have not as of yet, because we're just we're just now approving the submission to the state. From Emily Houston, what precautions will our private contractors take to ensure community safety? For example, essential school services, RMR chart levels. They're going to be following the same guidelines that we're following, and those expectations have been communicated already. Um, from Samsung, will children need to bring Chromebooks K-12 to school? We will be providing um, Chromebooks and Wi-Fi to any student in need. Um, and we are in development of a uh, distribution plan um, to prevent the sharing of Chromebooks. So in some cases, if they are on the hybrid plan, the expectation is that they will bring their Chromebook to and from school. Um, and we're also looking um, right now at um, cases that, that we, we provide to students. Um, from Aaron, how can staff monitor children in bathrooms or being outside the classroom for any reason for keeping their social distance? Um, and we will have, you know, people in place, staff members, which would not be the classroom teacher, um, such as people on hall duty to ensure that social distancing is being followed. Um, on, from Samsung, on the virtual days, will breaks and lunch be, um, so lunch will be delivered to the classrooms and taken to go, um, and will change, children be changing classes, and we've addressed that question, and that's all from this chat. Okay. Um, we have now gone through everything on uh, questions, uh, public comment on the curriculum and instruction agenda. Uh, I 
would ask if we can take a vote on, of action items on that agenda. Ms. Ascoli? Yes. Ms. Martinez? Yes. Mr. Monson? Hold on a second, Mr. Monson, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Mr. Monson. Yes. Thank you. Ms. Osborne? Yes. Ms. Whalen? Yes. Ms. Friedman? Yes. Thank you. Um, so do we have any unfinished business? Well, sort of, uh, and that will be finished or addressed further on the 12th, on the 11th, and on the 12th until we get this stuff done. Uh, by way of, I think, answering the questions, I believe that we've gone through what the committees have been working on. Um, so I'm not going to ask board members to update people on their particular committees. Uh, I do hope that the public takes the time to now, once we release this document, which we've approved, it'll be up tomorrow. Uh, they can review it, start emailing questions. At some point before Tuesday, I have full confidence everybody will have pledging power. Um, in business. So, uh, and I would ask just giving some due notice to the time. It's now 10 11. We do have uh, public comments relating to any additional items. Um, if there are comments, if there are questions uh, as to something other than what we've been through, uh, we're going to look at the chats to see where that is. Good on my end. Ms. Leaving. Up in here. Mr. Bob here. Do you have any new chat Chats questions? Zoom? Like a well wind. A few thank yous. Um, and no other since the last chat message. Okay. Um, so with that, we've done we will not have, as I said in the beginning, a second executive session. Uh, before I ask to adjourn, I again want to thank the administration. I want to thank this board for all the work that they've put in. Um, I want to thank the public for the questions, um, the thoughtful. Uh, I'm hoping that we can get the word out so that people who are not able to participate in this understand that we did this in a manner that we did so that the public could have the documents released to them so they can now look at them and move this process along and have ample time to make knowing intelligent decisions. With that, I would ask for a motion and a second to adjourn. I'll, I'll second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye.